From Local 24, forecast first from the Local 24 Storm Team, the Mid-South's most accurate forecast. Hello, I'm meteorologist Bailey Melton. What an absolutely beautiful day across the Mid-South. Plenty of sunshine, temps mainly staying in the 60s. Some clouds are going to move in, and you'll see that in the forecast first here with clouds at 7 o'clock, 60 degrees, more clouds by 10 o'clock and 56, and then by 7 o'clock in the morning, a mix of sun and clouds, uh, 49 degrees for the temperature when you wake up in the morning. Uh, we'll have more on the forecast, including including rain chances coming up in just a little bit. First, Local 24 News at 6 starts right now. Now at 6, a former Memphis police officer in jail accused of inappropriate conduct with a minor. Next, hear exclusively from the victim's father and how he found out about the behavior. Plus, two game fights lead to suspension for four popular Mid-South basketball teams. Ahead in sports, Jessica Benson breaks down the details. And you can expect detours on Interstate 240 all weekend long as part of the Memphis 4 project. We have an update on construction in just minutes. Live from WATN Memphis, local every day, this is Local 24 News at 6. A former Memphis police officer is behind bars accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a minor. Good evening, I'm Annette Pegler. Police in California arrested Andrew Hellams yesterday after investigators called MPD alerting them of their investigation. Local 24 News reporter Dave Datling is live outside of 201 Poplar with a look at the charges. And Dave, it was an alert parent who noticed something was wrong. Yeah, absolutely, Annette. We talked to that father who says uh, he saw his daughter's cell phone, knew something was wrong. He immediately called 911, alerting police in California, who then alerted police here in Memphis. Now, as for Helms uh, and those court documents, apparently that exchange of uh, texting and inappropriate photos went on for about a month. Take a look at this video. We did some digging and found out that uh, Helms was hired on to MPD in March of 2017, but was ultimately let go for failing to satisfy the department's probationary process. His Facebook account even shows him in an officer's uniform with personnel identifiers blacked out. As for the aggravated sexual exploitation of a minor charge, this all stems from contact he had with an eight-year-old girl in the San Francisco Bay, California area. Several court documents reveal uh, there had been several text messages between mid-November and December of last year where Helms asked for the child to send him inappropriate photographs in return he sent revealing photos of himself to the child. Now talking to the father of the child over the phone, he said every parent needs to monitor their child's electronic devices. I didn't know who it was. I just, like I said, I saw a text message pop up and nobody really should be texting her anyway. So um, I just followed up from there. She doesn't, her phone wasn't intended for her to be texting in chat rooms and stuff. So when I saw that, that's what alerted me. And he believes that uh, Helms may have had contact with his daughter through an app. I asked what app it was. He couldn't remember, but he says that since this all went down, he has had multiple conversations with his daughter. Now, as for Helms, he is still here at 201 Poplar after being arrested yesterday. He is expected to face a judge Monday. Bond has been set at $40,000. We're live outside 201 Poplar in downtown Memphis. Dave Detling, Local 24 News. Dave, thank you. Tonight, four Memphis high school basketball teams are facing in suspension and fines after a series of fights broke out during games last Friday. Here to break down what that means is local 24 sports anchor Jessica Benson. Hi Jess. Hey Annette, the TSSAA has issued postseason bans for Wooddale, Westwood, Melrose and Fairley High Schools following fights that broke out at two separate games earlier this month. All four schools do plan to appeal this decision. It was a decision made over fights that happened the night of January 25th, one after the Westwood Fairley game. The other happened towards the end of the Melrose Wooddale game. In both cases, fans from all teams were involved. The teams are allowed to resume regular season play, but the regular season ends next week. And for Wooddale and Westwood, there's an extra sting here as they're both considered state tournament contenders. Wooddale, who's now coached by Keelan Lawson, was ranked second in Class AA in the most recent state AP poll. Westwood was ranked seventh in single A. We'll hear from the teams involved tonight on Local 24 News at 10, but for now I'll send it back to you, Annette. All right, Jessica, thank you. Tonight, a Mid-South father is facing charges after investigators say he threatened to kill his ex-wife and seven children and tried to set their home on fire.
Memphis Fire Department was called to the 2300 block of South Parkway near Airways in Orange Mound just before midnight last night. Investigators didn't find a fire but noticed a very strong gas smell in an exposed crawl space under the home and in a rear bedroom window. The ex-wife told police that her ex-husband Calvin Hinton threatened through texts and phone messages that he was going to kill her and their children. Hinton is charged with aggravated arson. A local crime alert. Memphis police are looking for a man they say burglarized several businesses in a Cordova strip mall. Take a look at these pictures from the surveillance camera at the subway there. Police say bur the burglaries happened on January 16th around 1120 at the strip mall on Walnut Grove and Timber Creek Drive. The man pictured here is accused of shattering glass doors to enter the businesses. If you have any information on this man or these robberies, call Crime Stoppers at 528 cash. A local traffic alert, I-240 in East Memphis is shut down right now, and it's part of the Memphis 4 project. Crews are preparing to replace the railroad bridge over the interstate near Park Avenue. That means 240 is closed in both directions from the 40 flyover to Highway 385. Park Avenue is also closed. The closures are to move new railroads into place over I-240. You know, these bridges were built back in the uh, 60s, so it, it was just time to upgrade those. And when we were uh, widening I-240, we found some issues that we that needed to take place, which is the purpose of the Memphis 4 project. The interstate will reopen by 6 Monday morning, then crews will do it all again for the next three weekends. The entire Memphis 4 project is expected to be completed by June. Another big construction project is happening local in Memphis. Today, crews lifted the cross section of a new pedestrian bridge into place at the University of Memphis. The bridge crosses over train tracks in Southern Avenue to give students a safer way to walk between the northern and southern portions of campus. One student we talked to said it will help her get to class on time and burn some extra calories, too. I feel like it's, I feel like it'll be a help, you know, we won't be late, as late. The, step, the steps look pretty steep, but that look like it's going to be a hassle, but I think it's going to benefit us a lot. The bridge is part of a $33 million project that will also include a new parking garage and amphitheater. Construction should be completed by August. The Memphis Riverfront is about to get a dramatic makeover. At the public release at Bill Street Landing this afternoon, staff unveiled their new vision for the park, work on the plan, Work on the plan is expected to start in June and finish up near the end of 2020. The redesign div divides the 30 acre park into four different zones, a gateway to welcome visitors, a central area for re relaxation and play, a network of open spaces for music festivals like Memphis in May, and a nature area at the southern tip of the park. The river is our greatest natural asset. You know, it's why the city is here and we need to make a park that reflects that natural beauty. So we're, we've produced a design which is built on what Memphians have told us they wanted. The goal of the new design is to bring people to the park year round. While it was standing room only for a community meeting to discuss the city of Olive Branch plan to annex more than 50 square miles of land impacting thousands of residents there. The group Fight for DeSoto hosted the meeting at New Prospect Baptist Church this morning. Residents could get their questions answered and hear the group's plan to try to get the issue to the polls. Um, since we started, people are asking questions. What does this really mean to me? How is it going to affect me? Um, you know, what are the details? So we've invited the community to come out today. I don't like it because uh, property taxes are going to go up. And I've been out in Olive Branch since 1983, and I love it out there with a peaceful setting. A Chancery Court judge is expected to rule on the issue later this spring. If it is approved, the annexation will impact more than 14,000 people. Still ahead, Memphis native Carly Peace returns to The Ellen Show. Coming up, see why she's letting the TV host throw food at her all over again. You're watching Local 24 News at 6. Memphis woman who won $10,000 on The Ellen Show. Well, maybe this will jog your memory. Can you see me? No, no, there's <laughs> some in my eye. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Maybe you didn't make it tight enough. I didn't. Apparently taking a cannon full of food to the face wasn't enough to keep Carly Peace away. She'll be back on the show Monday. This time the pharmacy student will be tested on her knowledge of common pharmaceuticals. Ellen will be doubling the mess and the money. Carly has the chance to win $20,000, but it won't be easy. Ambient? Yes, you're correct. Wow. I'm sorry. That was a mistake. That was my bad. 
Well, you can see how Carly does Monday at 4 o'clock only on Local 24. Now the Local 24 Storm Team with the Mid-South's most accurate forecast. Hello, it's been a beautiful day across the Mid-South. You know that. Plenty of sunshine. Temperatures, well, the high made it up to 70 degrees today. And no rain to talk about. It's all dry on the radar here. As we look at the current temperatures, we uh, again got up to 70 degrees today, which is about... 18 or 19 degrees above where we should be for this time of the year should be in the lower 50s right now still at 61 in Memphis 61 Somerville Holly Springs 57 in Tunica and in Oxford tonight. Here's a look at the satellite and radar. We've got the, the clouds to our south and they started to move to the north a little bit late this afternoon. So we have seen a few clouds move into the area. I think more cloudiness comes in tonight out ahead of that southerly flow that's bringing in those warmer temperatures that will stick with us as well for tonight and into tomorrow. Clouds moving in. I think tomorrow is going to be dry, but we may have rain coming up uh, by Monday. We'll take a look at that. Hour by hour forecast starting 10 o'clock tonight. We'll be at 52 degrees. Uh, some clearing out there, but we'll have some clouds mixing in as we go into the overnight hours as well. 48 by Sunday morning at 8 o'clock, 50 in Corinth, 49 in Oxford. Still dry. And then as we go through the day on Sunday, again, just a mix of sun and clouds. I think sometimes we'll be partly cloudy, sometimes we'll be mostly cloudy, and sometimes we'll be mostly sunny. So you got it all there. Uh, just a mix of sun and clouds moving out 65 by 3 o'clock. As we go into uh, Sunday night in the overnight hours, we could see a chance of increasing showers across the area. Monday morning, 8 o'clock, could see some rain across parts of the Mid-South. That will continue through most of the day on Monday. I don't think it's going to be a total washout, one of these scattered showers types things where uh, some folks get the rain and some don't. Temperature then for tonight, 48 degrees. It'll be mostly cloudy and nice. Winds out of the south at 6 miles per hour. Here's the forecast for tomorrow. We're at 68 degrees for a high. Again, well above normal for this time of the year. Partly cloudy. Winds out of the south at about 8 miles per hour tomorrow. And as we look at the next seven days, it's not too bad tomorrow. But Monday we get a chance of rain with a disturbance moving in from the south and all that moisture coming in. Uh, that will lead us into a drier day on Tuesday, maybe a lingering shower in the morning. But then a cold front comes through. Pretty strong cold front. It's going to bring us a chance of some storms on Wednesday and Thursday. I think the best chance of rain and storms will be on Wednesday. And then as we get into Friday, we'll see some clearing and then back to the mid 40s for highs as we get into next Saturday with partly cloudy skies and uh, that's a, that's a little below normal. So we go from uh, well above normal to below normal. It's all over the place in Memphis, but that's normal. Yeah, I wish we could take the forecast from this weekend and just have it for the rest of I know, the year. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> It'd be great. Thank you so much, Bailey, for sure. that forecast. Well, the final NFL game of the season is tomorrow, and Tunica Casinos are taking advantage. Coming up, see how they're making use of a super sports betting holiday. You're watching Local 24 News at 6. A lot of hype is surrounding tomorrow's big game between the Rams and the Patriots. It's the first for people to place bets at one of six casinos in Tunica County. As Local 24 News reporter Tish Clark is local in Mississippi. We're getting ready for one of the biggest weekends in sports. Gold Strike Casino and Resort in Tunica, Mississippi is geared up for Sunday Super Bowl showdown. They're betting on a big crowd. Up to 10 windows open for Super Bowl coming up on Sunday. DeMar Wells plans to play several bets. He says Sunday will be serious business for gamblers. Every Sunday morning down here, when you're putting bets in at this casino, the, the lines are almost halfway out the door. We probably, you know, collect about 1,000 to 1,500 bets a day. So you don't have to just bet on the game, like the outcome of the Super Bowl. There are at least 150 different bets you can make within the game. Everything from uh, combined rushing yards to how many points are going to be scored, the number of safeties, and pretty much anything you can think of, we have a bet for you. Gold Strike reps say since sports betting opened in August, most bets have been placed on football. They'll have four areas where folks can watch the Super Bowl and three different areas where folks can place a bet, $5 and up. In Tunica, Mississippi, Tish Clark, Local 24 News. Electrolux is leaving town and Local 24 wants to let you know how we feel about it. Tomorrow on Local 24 This Week, anchor Richard Ransom will discuss the multi-million dollar project gone wrong with his expert panel. He'll be joined by political analyst Otis Sanford, Shelby County GOP Chair Lee Mills and philanthropist Summer Owens. Don't miss out. The show airs every Sunday morning at 9. 
Some local good news tonight, a high school student with a disability was voted to represent her senior class on the school's homecoming court. These pictures are of Natalie Henke, sent to us by her father, Rodney. Bolton High School will celebrate its Winterfest homecoming tonight. Natalie has a very rare condition called Mo Mobius syndrome, which affects cranial nerves, causing her facial paralysis and minimal eye movement. Natalie also has trouble walking and can't smile or blink, but she doesn't let that stop her from being social and outgoing. Natalie is the first special needs student to be nominated for this homecoming honor. We wish her luck. Well, the Memphis Tigers followed a familiar script today in Florida. Coming up, why a career day for Jeremiah Martin wasn't enough to help the Tigers get the win. You're watching Local 24 Sports. 27 to 1. 1. That was the actual score of an actual basketball game. South Florida had 27. The Memphis Tigers had 1. It gave new meaning to slow starts on the road as Memphis took nearly 10 minutes to make a shot from the field with that Keevan Davenport 3. The Bulls would lead 38 to 13 at half. And then Jeremiah Martin, the Memphis native, the Tigers senior put on one of the best single half performances you'll see at the college level. He had so much sauce, the wing guru should name a new flavor after him. The man was possessed. Look at this tough shot. He had zero points at halftime, clearly making up for it. Tigers slowly climbing back into this one. Martin the pass to Tyler Harris, who nails a three, gets it down to single digits. Then it's Martin with a three. Martin with a three. Martin. Going to be another three. He had seven three-pointers all in the second half. Pulled it within six with 30 seconds to play. Memphis couldn't get it any closer than that as they fall 84 to 78. But Martin with a career high 41 points all scored in the second half. I mean, it was great, but at the end of the day, we still lost still lost the day as a, uh, as a team. Maybe for like a personal goal, that would be great. But honestly, it really don't feel good because we lost it. If it would have win, it would have been great. I would have been, you know, happy. But it's a, it's a loss. I really feel like if I would have did more in the first half, I would have gave my chance, my team a better chance of winning. So at the end of the day, we still lost. I didn't. I didn't have to challenge him at halftime. I challenged the team. I didn't just personally go at him. I uh, just told the guys that we have to fight our butts off to get back into the game, and I felt like we could if we could just make some shots. We get some stops in a row, and make some shots. It was just unfortunate that they they shot a ton of free throws. We got some stops, but. All the free throws that they shot, it kind of reminds me of the Tennessee game. They shot 44 free throws. The Memphis women hosting Tulsa this afternoon. Golden Hurricane in front in the fourth. Jamira shoots doing the heavy lifting for the Tigers on both sides of the floor, swatting it out of the gym, then shoots. She shoots. She has a great name. From the perimeter, gets Memphis the two-point edge. Tulsa lead was one with 45 seconds to go and shoots. Going to miss, but Alana Davis going to be there for the putback and the lead. Shoots with 24 points as Memphis pulls out the win, 59 to 56. And as we reported earlier in this broadcast, the TSSAA has issued postseason bans for four area teams following fights that broke out at two separate games earlier this month. Wooddale, Westwood, Melrose, and Fairley have each received a two-year postseason ban along with a $3,500 fine to be paid as a group. All four schools will appeal the decision and they are allowed to finish the regular season. Both Wooddale and Westwood were considered state tournament contenders and that regular season wraps up next week. So not a whole lot of time to work on that appeal there. Yeah, that's like really bad news. <laughs> so really disappointing and for Definitely. all those kids too and mm -hmm. many seniors on those teams whose uh, seasons will kind of unexplicably be cut short. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for that report, Jessica. And it's hard to believe what a difference a week makes. Meteorologist Bailey Melton is up next with a final look at our forecast. And now Bailey is here with a final check of the forecast. Yeah, we forgot to mention uh, the groundhog today, though. He yes. did not see his shadow, so he says Yay. there's going to be uh, spring coming early. I'm happy Always about that. Always trust the groundhog. Yeah, we'll see. Just we'll see. With it. Here's the forecast <laughs> for sure. Tomorrow, partly cloudy uh, and some uh, nice sunshine around 68 for a high. Rain comes in Monday, but then a break on Tuesday. Showers and thunderstorms coming up Wednesday and Thursday and back to the cooler temperatures. 44 for a high next Saturday, but dry. All right, I like that forecast for yes, the weekend. That's yes. nice sunny temperatures. That's right. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. And that'll do it for Local 24 News at 6. Be sure to join us again right here tonight at Local 24 News at 10. Have a great night.